All right. What is up, everybody? Let me know if you can hear me okay. Uh, I'm still getting used to using StreamYard. Uh, so just kind of playing around with it a little bit here. And I think everything should be working. But uh, I want to make sure that the sound's working and everything. Uh, so when I see in the chat that it is, we'll go ahead and get started. There's a little bit of a delay, so... All right, I want to go somewhere, too, where I can see the stats on this thing here. Hey, hey, can you hear me? Can you guys hear me okay? I haven't seen anything in the chat yet, so I don't know. Oh, yeah, I guess it is. I just went to, <laughs> went to it myself. So uh, Gettysburg was great. And actually, we're going to start there um, because uh, literally 30 seconds before this stream started, I got an email from Andrew Dalton, who is the director of the Adams County Historical Society. Uh, who is the main instigator behind this amazing event that we were a part of. And you may notice I have a bit of a tan, and that's what spending a week in Italy will do to you, because <laughs> it was sunny and hot the whole time we were there. The last day, a cold front moved in, and it rained when we were in Pompeii, uh, and uh, it cooled off, and now it's cooler in Italy, so we got the hot weather. Um, so... Uh, West Brom or Ipswich Town. Well, that's easy. You can see what I'm wearing right here. So, uh, so uh, hey, John, what's going on? Hope you are uh, recovering. Um, yeah. So he, uh, yeah, he mentioned that. Uh, so I'm gonna, I'm gonna talk about all of that uh, with Italy uh, and Eldon. I'll answer your question real quick, and then I want to just real quickly recap our weekend in Gettysburg. And, and actually, I'm gonna look at these pictures live that Andrew sent me that I haven't even looked at yet. So I don't know what's in them. Uh, so I'm kind of excited about that. So what's the one place didn't get to go to in Italy that would be on the top of my list for next time? Um, well, first of all, I would spend more time in the places we already went because I didn't get enough time in those places. Um, didn't have enough time in Florence, didn't have enough time in Rome, didn't get to walk around the, the forum. We, we were around the outside, but didn't get to go into the forum which is a, kind of a behind a paywall, so to speak. You have to pay to go down in it. So I'd like to do that. I'd like to spend more time at Pompeii, uh, see Herculaneum. Uh, but of a place that I didn't go at all, I would probably say Anzio to the American Cemetery and to the battlefields there. Um, so yes, uh, save all your questions about where we went because I'm going to talk about where we went. So I'll explain all of that. Joe, what's going on, man? Uh Hope you're recovering as well from the trip. Uh, so real quick, um, I want to tell you a little bit about the Gettysburg Film Festival that I got to be a part of. And I'm going to go ahead and pull up these pictures that Andrew sent me um, that I haven't actually seen yet. So here's the first one. And this is actually, this is cool because this is the exact moment that my son Eli and I met and JD from the History Underground met Martin Sheen for the first time. Uh, this is right when we walked in, Martin Sheen got there like seconds before we did. So we all kind of walked in at the same time. And if you haven't already heard me say so, uh, either on the video that I uploaded or on Instagram or anywhere else, let me just say it again. And I will say it till the day I die. Martin Sheen is like one of the nicest, like, like ridiculously nice people I have ever met in my life. The guy... I've had the privilege of meeting some famous people in my time, and, and many of them have been very nice, but I've never met anyone like him. This guy is the real deal, let me tell you. I mean, he went out of his way to talk to everybody. And I, I mean, more than I do, ever do. And he's like infinitely more famous than I'll ever be. Um, he, I mean, he just, uh, like to the point where uh, there was a story where we heard that he went into the hotel one night that he was staying at in Gettysburg and had gone, it was late. It was a long day already. And he was heading up to his room and felt so terribly that he hadn't stopped to take time to talk to people in the lobby that 
even after he got upstairs, he went back down the elevator to go talk to those people. Um, and, and it wasn't just like being polite. Like he was genuinely interested in people. He was asking questions. He was curious. He did follow up questions and he would stand there and talk to you for a while. Uh, just, oh my gosh, what is just an incredibly generous, kind, very decent man. And I will never tolerate a negative thing being said about Martin Sheen as long as I live. Cause he was the real deal. Just so cool. Um, Hey, it's Stella. You're back in Gettysburg again. You were just there. Um, so I'm looking at these pictures. I haven't seen them yet. So there's me and my son, Eli, and you can see just part of JD's ear there. And like I said, that's right. When we walked in, there's Andrew on the right. Andrew Dalton is also awesome. He is putting together some incredible stuff. He's a native of Gettysburg, hard worker. Um, so let's see what else we've got here. Oh, there's another one. There's me, J, uh, JD and Eli talking to Martin Sheen. And as, like I said, just the guy just stood there talking to us. And, and I finally felt bad because they were trying to take him over to see the museum. And I'm like, hey, you know, you should go, go, go see the museum. Like he would have stood there and talked to us all day if, if it hadn't been that. Um, so let's see what else we've got here. I have no idea what these are. Oh, there, Hey, another good guy. That was at breakfast the next morning. Uh, that's JD and Gary Edelman from the American battlefield trust and myself. Did I have pizza in Italy? Yes, I did. I, I prefer pizza in the U.S. though. Um, all right, there's uh, there's me up on stage. That was when JD and I did uh, an event. We were like the last event of the um, of the Gettysburg Film Festival. Uh, yep, there's the three of us, and um, we had uh, Alicia, who was a teacher uh, at Gettysburg Middle School, who was our moderator and did a fantastic job. Uh, was also very kind. Um, and uh, we're going to get to Italy in just a minute, uh, electric. But yes, I did have gelato quite a few times, actually. Uh, first time I got gelato was actually at the Vatican. I got some lemon gelato. Um, there's another one of those. Uh, several from that. So, yeah, that was such a fun event. We had a ball with that. We always do. Anytime we're in Gettysburg. So, uh, all right. So those are some of the ones he sent me. Um, I'll see if I can pull up a few others that I have from the event. Um, So here's one there. Uh, there's me and Martin. I was taken around the same time. No, the Pope did not say hello to us. Um, did not see the Pope, though I do believe he is. Uh, did we get to watch any films? Um, yeah, we saw some clips uh, of some things, and uh, we also got to hear a little bit about the upcoming one that uh, Ken Burns has coming, uh, which is uh, going to be about the revolution. Um, also, uh, Martin Sheen was not the only person we got to hang out with that weekend. Um, let me go ahead and pull up this other one for you here. Uh, let's see. Entire screen. There we go. Um, hey, there's me and uh, Sam Waterston, who was also really nice and hilarious. Sam Waterston it was just, uh, he has a very funny sense of humor. Like, um, just... Uh, He's very witty, and it came very naturally to him. And uh, uh, if you haven't seen the video already, um, I uploaded a video that weekend uh, of Sam Waterston reading the Gettysburg Address in our best guess for the location of where the platform was, where Lincoln was standing when he delivered the Gettysburg Address. And Sam Waterston played Abraham Lincoln not only in a, a 1980s miniseries, but also in... Uh, he was the voice of Lincoln in Ken Burns documentary. So, uh, yes, <laughs> as Michael is saying, Michael was on the trip. We've got several folks who were on the trip here. John, um, Michael, Joe, there was a lot of lemoncello spritz that was drunk in Italy. That is absolutely true. Um, in fact, let's go ahead and, uh, I'll show you the first one. There is the very first lemoncello spritz that I had in Italy. Uh, that's me and Simon. Despite Simon's demeanor in this picture, he was actually having a really good time. This was Simon's 60th birthday. And so he had emailed me a couple of months ago and invited me to dinner with him the night that we arrived in Italy and because it was his 60th birthday. And so I thought that would be a great way to celebrate. Um, so uh, that was the first lemoncello spritz we had. That was a just a little bar that we sat at and ate or and drank uh 
the spritzes before we went across the street um, for our dinner that night. And um, yes, so the Italy trip did already happen. I actually got back day before yesterday. That was a long day. It took 24 and a half hours to get home. Uh, so I'll get to it uh, as we get there. But I had to go from Pompeii uh, to Naples, to Rome, to New York, to Cleveland, to home. And it took 24 and a half hours. Uh, yeah. Uh, and so then Joe had his 25th birthday two days later. And uh, the the owner of the restaurant where we were celebrating Joe's birthday dropped the cake on Joe <laughs> right after we sang happy birthday to him. Um, so, yes, he was attacked by a cake. Um, where's the next trip to? Well, that's a great question uh, and one that I will be happy to answer. Um, uh, it's a multi-part answer, um, because the next current group trip that is already scheduled is to Egypt in March of 2025, and it is sold out. That is completely booked. We have filled every spot for that, even though it's still 11 months away, but fear not more group trips are coming. Uh, I am currently working on a Western front tour. It's going to go to the Somme, to Vimy Ridge, and to Ypres in Belgium. We're going to hit some of the big spots uh, that involve the British and Commonwealth forces uh, in the First World War. Uh, and that, that trip is actually going to, um, Jonathan, I'll get to that in a minute. Uh, that trip is uh, going to leave and return to London. And we're going to be taking a, like a big tour bus. And I think we can take up to like 45 or 50 people on that. Uh, and so we'll leave London. We'll go across the channel. We'll stay in Arras and then we'll return to London. And I'll invite anybody who wants to stick around for a couple of days in London to kind of tour some big sites with me there as well. I think it's going to be in the neighborhood of about a thousand dollars a person, but I'm working on finalizing those details uh, that'll cover your your transportation to the battlefields and back to London. It'll cover all your hotels, um, your breakfast, but not your lunches or dinners or any other expenses you want to have. But it'll cover your transportation and your hotels uh, for the entire trip. And it'll be about $1,000 a person. But I'm working on the final itinerary. I have a, a meeting, a video chat coming up with Paul Reed about that. Paul Reed's one of the top experts on World War I that you can find. And we're going to actually have one of his, I'm hoping we can actually get him, but if it can't be him, it'll be one of his people, uh, somebody who knows infinitely more about these battlefields than I do uh, as a historian that'll be be there with us. And I, I'll be helping out where I can. Uh, they asked me if I wanted to be the tour guide myself, but I said I'd rather have one of their people uh, that I think could do a better job of it because they know those battlefields. So, um, so yeah, um, yeah. Somebody asked about Germany. There is a Germany and Austria trip scheduled for December, but I think that's going to get canceled. We've only had one booking so far, and we're getting to the place where we have to make a decision about that. And uh, we need at least twelve people in order to to make it ha happen. You can't do it with less than twelve people. They they won't confirm the trip otherwise. Uh, and so I think we're going to probably cancel that and uh, probably do the Western Front trip in November instead. Um, I am also working on some other kind of long-term plans for group trips like the one we did in Italy, uh, looking at China, looking at Peru. So um, trying to figure out when to do all those. So, uh, but it's in the works. Um, all right. So uh, yeah, as Michael said, our guide Mark was fantastic. That is a hundred percent true. I'm going to show you Mark here. Uh, Mark was born in the Caribbean and uh, lives in Sicily now, and he was absolutely first class. I mean, I cannot say enough good things about what an amazing uh, group guide Mark was for us for the week. Uh, so here you go. Let me pull up Mark for you. Just awesome. He was absolutely awesome. There's Mark there, and uh, just always knew what was going on with the trip. He always kind of prepared us for what the next steps were, when we were going to be where, what we were doing. Uh, just awesome. It, it was so good. So good. Um, all right. So let me catch up on the chat a little bit here. Um, any plans for Poland or Switzerland? Not at the moment. 
but definitely both places that I would very much like to get to that I haven't been to yet. Will I ever go to Norway? I, uh, yes, would love to someday. Um, any developments on Battlefield tours in the U.S.? Yes. Uh, I don't have anything announced yet, um, but I'll have to do some work on this now that I'm back from Italy. Um, probably going to be Fredericksburg, Chancellorsville, Wilderness, Spotsylvania in that area. We're not going to do all those battlefields. Couldn't cover all of that, uh, but it'll probably be another weekend like we did in Vicksburg. So two days. Um, so I'll probably, I'll try to figure out what the best way to do that is. Um, but that's probably where that's going to be. Uh, yeah. John says they took care of us after that cake drop though. Um, uh, yeah, Mark did help with j making Joe's birthday happen. He knew the, the owner of that place that we stopped to eat in Rome uh, and set it all up for us. And yeah, he was he was fantastic. Uh, so let's talk a little bit about Italy, shall we? I uh, just want to share some of what we experienced um, in Italy. But um, Flex Tape Yeet, thank you for that. Been great to see you. So my German close friend is currently in Italy. The people she met there have all been rude so far. No, absolutely the total opposite of that. Uh, I found Italian people to be really nice, really laid back, really friendly. And, and quite honestly, Italy is one of my favorite countries I've ever been to. It was that good. I absolutely loved Italy. The people were great. Uh, that was not at all my experience in Italy. Um, and, and the other folks who uh, are in the chat that were on the tour can speak to that themselves, but um, no, I, I didn't think that at all. Um, History Dose. Yes, I, I actually was reading about your Mongolia adventure. When we were in Italy, I was telling people about your Mongolia trip and where you're headed uh, this summer for that. It looks like a pretty pretty cool experience awaits. Um, yeah, I, two, two Trova trip, uh, trips that I've done now. Had a great experience with both of them. Um, Will I ever go to any other Middle Eastern countries besides Egypt? Yes, I would very much like to someday. Um, there's certainly other ones I would love to get to if I get the chance. Will I ever visit Spain? Yes, I hope so. And my sister actually just went to Spain last summer, uh, and she loved it. So um, came from a three-hour stream between me and Mr. Beat into another stream of yours. Awesome. Mr. Beat, love it. Uh, where does Italy rank in European countries I have visited? Ooh. Now, Understand uh, that I just got home two days ago, so Italy's super fresh on my mind, uh, and I've had positive experiences in all the countries that I've visited. Uh, I'm also super biased toward the UK, uh, so I'm not. I'm going to throw them out of of the discussion just because it wouldn't be fair of me to include the UK because I'm biased toward them. Um, so of the other countries, European countries I've visited, what are we talking about? We're talking about France, Belgium, the Netherlands, Germany, Austria, uh, and briefly Luxembourg. Of those, mm, Italy's my favorite. I think Italy might be my favorite, probably followed closely by Austria. Uh, but I've loved them all. I've had great experiences in all of those countries. So um, I don't want to discount any of them because... Um, They've all been great. I, I've not had a bad experience overall in a country. I've had bad moments in different countries like Paris, hated Paris. Um, but uh, do I think I'll go to Ireland sometime? Well, yeah, sooner than I think. Um, if not sooner, I will be in Ireland in May of 2025 for my friend Joe's wedding. Joe is or was in the chat. He was just with us in Italy. Uh, so I'll definitely be, if not sooner, in Dublin next year um all right so uh let's go back to um talking about the trip a little bit yeah so john agrees best country he's visited visited easily um the one rude guy was an american who in a rather funny exchange told our guy to bleep guide to bleep off yep accurate 100 percent accurate Unfortunately, more often than not, not when I've encountered a particularly rude and obnoxious person in Europe, it's been an American. Um, that said, most of the Americans that I've encountered in Europe have also been great. So uh, exception, not the rule, certainly. How common were tourist traps? Oh, yeah. they. <laughs> They, let me tell you about that. So, um, you know what? Let me. I'm getting ahead of myself a little bit. 
So let's talk a little bit about some of the places that we visited in Italy. Um, and then we'll kind of go from there. So um, my, my son's being very loud upstairs. I can hear him. So, so the first day that I got to Italy, uh, we hadn't actually started our tour yet. Um, and I'm just going to kind of cycle through some pictures and I'll use those to kind of talk about some things here a little bit. Um, and you can ask your questions as we go along. Um, so this was a block away from the hotel about an hour after I got to Italy, um, or got to, to, to Rome. Um, and you come down the first block and you look and boom, there's the Colosseum right there. So that was pretty cool. Um, cause we were that close, uh, to all of these historic sites like the Colosseum. Um, uh, so Jonathan, I, I guess I'll, I'll just save you the trouble. Now the Western front trip is not going to be through Trover trip. They don't have a trip like that. Uh, it's something I'm going through another agency for. Um, so Trover trip credit won't do you any good, uh, on a Western front trip. Um, uh, so, all right, so let's, uh, Let's take a look. So this this is uh, right in the, the heart of, of um, Rome. You get into where the forums were, and there were multiple forums because they were built by different people uh, over time. You know, one built during Caesar's time, one built during Augustus's time. Um, I think Nerva and Hadrian. Um, but you can kind of see that area here where the, the Roman forums were. Uh, this part here is known as the the, I think it's called the Peace Forum. Uh, it was built during Vespasian's reign in the aftermath of the Year of the Four Emperors uh, to kind of recognize that time of peace. Um, so uh, as you can see, people are down there in there. Um, we weren't. Um, so that's something I'd like to go back and do uh, is go back and actually walk in those forums. Uh, it looks like I got my finger in the picture on that one a little bit. Uh, that's the statue of Caesar. And what they did, Julius Caesar, um, what they do is they have these statues in front of the forums that were built during the reigns of those particular people, uh, in this case, a dictator, others, emperors. Um, uh, so, yeah, again, these are all pictures I took the first day just walking around. Uh, that is the uh, Arch of Constantine, I think. Yeah, because I, I saw it again later. Arch of Constantine built in the fourth century. Uh, to commemorate Constantine's uh, victory at Milvian Bridge. Uh, so again, these are all just kind of areas of the forum. Um, that's a really uh, cool picture that I got of the uh, of all of the forum areas there too. Uh, there's my first up close look at the Colosseum, which we did go into um, on our tour. Uh, so again, there's the that's the Arch of Constantine there. Uh, that is uh, Trajan's, yeah, that's Trajan's column. Now, this here is where Julius Caesar was assassinated. And it's just been open to the public like about a year ago. Um, and where he was assassinated is actually right back around where this tree is, is where he would have been sitting. He was sitting when he was first stabbed. Um, so, um, yeah, I'll, I'll show you later. We, we actually went down in there uh, and then walked around and, and got some better pictures of that site. So, um, oh, yeah, there's my food the first night and my first tiramisu, but certainly not my last. Uh, so this here is um, this is where the uh, unknown warrior is for Italy. And you can see the two guards there and one of the flames around it um, where they were. Uh, and we walked past that a number of times. Massive, massive spot. Now we're starting to get more of our folks there. There are five of us. There's Joe, who's in the chat uh, right there. Um, so this, this was really cool. This is the next morning. This is still before we started our official tour. Um, but this is the Church of St. or the Basilica of St. Peter outside the walls. Uh, and it's, um, it's, believed to be, and there's good historical evidence of this, uh, the place where um, St. Paul, did I say Peter? I meant Paul. Yeah, Joe corrected me. Uh, the Church of St. Paul outside the walls. Um, 
where St. Paul is buried. And if you read through the historical documentation of this, it's uh, it's pretty well established that he was originally buried in what is today the um, the uh, necropolis or the nah, um, when I'm streaming, I forget things. Um, the catacombs um, of Saint. Oh gosh. Why does this always happen to me when I'm streaming? Somebody will probably catch up and tell me. Um, I'm looking it up because now I can't. Oh, St. Sebastian. That's it. So the catacombs of St. Sebastian um, was actually where uh, he and, and Peter were both initially or well were buried for a while. Uh, but then he was moved here. And then when Constantine became emperor of Rome, he uh, had a number of basilicas built on what were considered holy sites, including one over the tomb of Peter. And it was massive complex really really cool um so i'll show you i mean just look at this these churches are all just magnificent and beautiful and amazing um so this is actually the site here where paul's tomb is and there, those are said to be the chains or a remnant of the chains that held paul when he was in prison uh, and then right here is actually where his sarcophagus is. And they did do testing on the bones back in 2006 and determined that they were of a man in his 60s from the first century AD. You're not going to get any more specific than that. That's the best you can really hope for. So, um, yeah, we just went there. I just went there last week. So, um, so yeah, there's me standing at the site. Uh, that was a really cool site. And uh, there's Joe again, uh, along with Anna and Dominic, who's from Canada. Um, all right, so that's that. So here is the Circus Maximus, another really, really cool site. Um, it was said, depending on the source you read, 250 to 300,000 people uh, could be seated in the Circus Maximus. Uh, we're down on one end of it here. This tower here dates to like, I don't know, 1200 or so A.D., uh, and a lot of people you'll see had these virtual reality goggles on because you could wear those and see what it would have looked like at the time. We didn't do that. We just kind of walked around. Um, any Czech people this time? Yeah, actually the same Czech person who was on the last one. Our friend Vashik was on the trip and he's already signed up for Egypt as well. Um, so... Yeah, it's, uh, so yeah, Cerco Max, uh, Massimo is uh, how, how it would be said in Italy. But yeah, it's um, in Italian, it's Circus Maximus. Um, so yeah, I mean, you can see the kind of the, the bump in the middle there. And that's where they would have had like monuments and shrines and different things like that. Uh, and, and except for this end part where they've been doing archaeology, the rest is kind of a public park that people can walk in. Um, the Talladega of the Roman world. Yes. Hey, there's uh, Vashek, as we call him. Um, uh, Vaslav is his his formal name. Um, so here, I'll show you a few other pictures of the uh, Circus Maximus. Uh, and everywhere you go, you see SPQR, which is the people in the Senate, or, uh, the Senate and the people of Rome. Uh, it's there, like they use it to this day. It's on like the manhole covers and everything. Um we did see the Aurelian walls. Um, gonna show you those in a little bit uh, when we walked out to that site. Yeah, there's Vashek right there. There's our Czech friend with Simon. That was when he first arrived. And you can see he's only got one arm. He had the other one bitten off by an alligator. No, I'm just kidding. He uh, he was it was in a it was in a sling, so it was under his shirt. Um, so here you go. Uh, here's some more of the Circus Maximus. Um, there you can kind of see the remnants of the sites. What's crazy, and one of the things that's a common theme that I learned over and over and over again, or I was just reminded of over and over again, is that there are so many things that the Romans did that we still do today or that we do again today that were kind of lost for a long time. The way the Circus Maximus and the Colosseum are designed, exactly the way we do stadiums to this day. You could walk through 
uh, these areas. Oh, there's the pizza I had. So, uh, and you could see where the latrines were, where the restrooms were. You can see where the concession stands were. It was crazy. It's just just exactly the way that we do them today. Um, no, did not see any sports venues, did not see any sports events while we were there. The food was great in Italy. It was really, really good. There was my first pizza in Italy, along with a Coke. Uh, and I think we might have had another. Yep, I had a limoncello spritz. You can see it right there. That was my second limoncello spritz, not my last. Um, so uh, that is one of the baths. I want to say that's the baths of Diocletian. Uh, off the top of my head, um, not even the biggest baths. Um, but uh, so here is, uh, we went for a walk um, down the Appian Way. Uh, here's one of the gates. This is one of the gates in the Aurelian uh, walls as we were leaving. So there's part of the Aurelian walls. Those were built, um, I don't know, off the top of my head, 1700 years ago. They're like, I think fourth century AD is when those were built. Um, maybe, maybe earlier. I think that's about right though. Um, well, I appreciate that loaf Hauser. Uh, all of these were taken with my phone. So I did the best I could. Um, <laughs> John says, when I dream of Italy, it will include lemoncello spritz. That's how many were consumed. No lie. When all of us were together, there were 22 of us on this tour. You could look around at the table and see like 18 limoncello spritzes sitting there. Uh, all right. Thank you, Joe. 271 to 275 AD. So, uh, yeah, they were built fast. They were built in a hurry. Um, so, yeah, that's part of the walls that we got to see. Um, just massive, massive walls. Uh, and so this was the one mile marker, I believe. I think it's a replica of the original uh, one mile marker. Uh, so this little chapel here, um, again, uh, because I am not only a Christian, but a pastor myself and many of the other folks who were on the tour with us are also Christians or just at least interested in Christian history. Um, you, This is not in the Bible, but um, there are stories told uh, and there are other church writings that tell this story. Uh, so according to these church writings, these early church fathers, when the persecution happened under Nero. So we're talking the first part of the 60s AD uh, to the middle of the 60s AD when Nero persecuted Christians. Um, Paul was beheaded. And, and Peter, according to these early church fathers who wrote about this, the apostle Peter was fleeing the city and fleeing the persecution. And according to these stories, he gets outside the city a couple of miles and he encounters Jesus appearing to him on the road. And Peter says to him, Lord, where are you going? And, P and Jesus says, I'm going to Rome to be crucified again. And by that, Peter understood that it was his time to be martyred. Uh, and, and it goes back to, there's a story in the gospels where um, Jesus tells Peter that someday he would stretch out his hands and be taken somewhere he did not want to go. And it says in the gospel, it says, by this, uh, the Lord was was prophesying, was, was stating how Peter would someday die. So it was understood even then that Peter would someday die by crucifixion. And according to the story, in this chapel, this chapel marks the spot where that encounter took place between Peter and Jesus. Um and they and this is supposed to be the exact spot right here where that happened. So, um, you know, you take that stuff for what it's worth, like a lot of stories, whether it's in religion or in history. You know, I mean, who knows? Did it happen? I, be I believe it did. Um, there's no way we'll ever know for sure, just like we won't with a lot of historical um, things. But this is that chapel. Um So uh, this is the uh, the tomb of Saint Sebastian. Uh, he's actually some of his uh, his bones are in this, and some are right below. And we actually saw his original tomb. Um, we couldn't take pictures or video in the catacombs themselves, so unfortunately, I don't have any pictures or or video from that uh, to be able to show you. Uh, but all of this that you've seen so far is before the actual tour even started. This is stuff we did on our own before the official tour started. This is the very last 
work of art that um, that Bernini ever did. And it's in the Basilica of St. Sebastian, uh, Salvador Mundi, savior of the world. Um, and yeah, so that's from 1679. And we saw so much ridiculous art that like eventually you almost get numb to it because you're seeing so much history and so much art uh, and so many things uh, that any one of them would be like just a priceless treasure. And we saw thousands of them. Uh, it's just so crazy. Yeah, absolutely true. Rome is a museum. Um, and it's and, and how quickly you adjust to it. We were walking down the Appian Way and we're passing like medieval structures that are a thousand years old and we're not even paying attention to them. Because at that point, that wasn't even interesting anymore because we were passing so many things that were 1,800, 2,000, 2,200 years old. Uh, that's how quickly your perspective changes on that stuff. Um, yeah, uh, it, it's crazy. Um, uh, yeah, so you'll see here, uh, as I get through these, um, that we, we did go to the Vatican, uh, and see a lot. Again, the Vatican's art collection, again, just ridiculous what they've got. Um, so here we are on our, uh, on our bus going back to the center of the city after walking forever. And that, uh, so this is our official beginning to our tour. Um, that night with our opening dinner, uh, and you can kind of see the group there. I had did have some red wine that night. Um, so yeah, so uh, I'll get to that. Uh, this is black currant juice, which uh, my kids love black currant flavor, so I had to take a picture of that. So here we are getting ready to go uh, on our first tour. There's again, that's the Circus Maximus from the other side. Ah, there's Castel Sant'Angelo, otherwise known as the Mausoleum of Hadrian, if you're familiar with. Sabaton's song, The Last Stand. You know, they sing about Castel Sant'Angelo. Um, how was public transport in Italy? Uh, mostly late and typically pretty crowded. Um, yeah, but it was still, I mean, it was fine. I, I have no complaints about it. Uh, is the Vatican the same as Rome? The Vatican is a separate, uh, independent state. Uh, so it, it is its own country, but it's within Rome. It's inside of Rome. So imagine a part of a part inside of Rome that isn't part of Rome isn't part of Italy. Um, I mean, European public transport for the most part, I didn't have, I haven't had trouble with. Um, just some parts are crowded. But yeah, there's a, there's a better picture of Castel Sant'Angelo. We didn't get to go inside of it. That's so. That's something I would very much like to go and see uh, when I go back to Rome. So here we are. Uh, this is Elena, who was our tour guide, and she was magnificent both days in Rome. Uh, these are actually this is the wall of the Vatican. Uh, so that's outside of Vatican City, right there. Um, Or actually, no, you know what? That wasn't outside the Vatican. That's before we went to the Vatican. That's just inside of Rome there. Um, uh, let's take a look. So here's a few uh, Spanish steps. If you ever heard of the Spanish steps, there you go. Um, that's the Spanish steps. I'll show you our uh, group. There's one of our group pictures there. So that's our whole tour group right there for you. Uh, so we've got, just telling you some of the countries, we've got UK, uh, Czechia, We've got, we had four of us, I think four of us from Ohio, three from Northeast Ohio, uh, Michigan. There's Justin there. Poor Justin um, got pickpocketed at the train station, lost his phone. There's Matteo, who is from Italy. Um, Ricard is from Sweden. Michael's from Germany. Got a bunch from the UK. Um, Sam's UK as well. Um, I think that's all the countries. Yeah. Was it difficult to get into the Vatican? Not for us, only because we had group tickets that were $200 a piece um, that were part of our tour. So, I mean, we'd have to pay separate for those. Um, but otherwise, yes, I'm told it can be difficult to get to the get into the Vatican. Uh, the people were waiting hours in line to get in. Uh, that's the Trevi Fountain, which we also saw and was also super busy uh, and super crowded. Um, 
yeah, the, the the group tickets we had were $200. You can get in cheaper than that. I just know that's the price that was printed on the tickets that we had. So, um, but yeah, we had a, a, a private tour guide in, in the, uh, in the Vatican. Are there people trying to scam you at the sites? Like at the pyramids, I haven't been to the pyramids yet, but, uh, yes, uh, down around the forums, especially there were a lot of, there was a lot of that, um, Uh, yeah, I mean, it was, it was, it was a quick entry, Jonathan, that we had, uh, Steve. Yeah. Uh, I mean, uh, yeah, you can't see all of Trajan's column when you actually see Trajan's column because it is just really tall. And, um, uh, there's, uh, Trajan, uh, in front of his forum, uh, there's Caesar Augustus. Uh, so where is this now? Uh, oh, Hey, this is the Colosseum. All right. Um, I've heard the ones at the pyramid are especially pretty hardcore. And uh, um, yeah, so we got the same thing with the Coliseum, massive lines, massive crowds. And we were there in April. So it wasn't even like the busy time of year. Um, uh, are you, or have you ever done the district state or national history day? I'm not entirely sure what you mean by that. Uh, so I'm sorry. I don't really understand the question. I watched so much of your stuff. Uh, first time catching you live. Appreciate that. Thank you so much. Uh, and yes, a seagull uh, in the. Uh, uh, yeah, history dose. Great point. I always keep my wallet in my front pocket. In fact, I kept everything in my front left pocket where I kind of kept my hand on it because there were other people in our group who almost got pickpocketed or had people like reaching. I think Joe had somebody reaching into his pocket and kind of caught him before it was too late. Um, uh, but yeah, uh, was it Florence? Yeah, it was Florence where he got pickpocketed. Yeah. Um, all right. So uh, yeah, let me show you a few more. There's another one of the Coliseum. You can kind of see the size of it there a little bit. Um, really cool, really cool sight to uh, see. Uh, only took eight years for them to build it uh, originally. And uh, it's actually, uh, if you're not familiar with Roman history, its name wasn't actually called the Colosseum. That's what we call it today. Uh, to the people of the time, it was completed in 80 AD. Uh, it was known as the Flavian Amphitheater because it was built by the Flavian emperors uh, Vespasian, and then his son, Titus, uh, who was the one who opened it. Uh, and they would do, uh, there were 5,000 animals that died in the first 100 days uh, of the, the Colosseum's opening uh, under Titus. Um, yes, we did. No, we didn't visit um, the one in Anzio. Which is the the Rome, the Sicily Rome American Cemetery? We didn't get to that one. Um, uh, yeah, great point, history dose. Uh, and we actually, I, I, I'll see if I got a picture of it. If I didn't get a picture of it, I definitely did get a video of it because I, I will have a video coming from the Colosseum uh, that I did there, uh, and you'll actually see where they pumped the water in, and they could fill uh, fill the Colosseum floor to four and a half feet of water in 15 minutes for the, the naval battles that they would do in there. Um, does the place that Caesar was assassinated still exist? Yes, and I'll show you that site uh, here shortly. Um, yes, yeah, so there's a few more of the Colosseum. Uh, this is from over on the side. Uh, below me here uh, is where the emperor would have sat, where the kind of the main grand entrance is. Um so there's a few more pictures of me. Let's see. Uh, so here you can see they they have built a reproduction of the the trap doors that they would have, where they could raise like almost like an elevator. Uh, you see that in the movie Gladiator, where they raise, um, where they would raise animals or gladiators or whatever up from kind of the the locker rooms beneath. Um, so they did really do that, and this is kind of an example of what one of them would have looked like. Uh, really fascinating uh, structure, uh, the Colosseum. Really, really cool. 
Um, so I guess I didn't take a picture. So this is the place where Joe later in the day would have cake dropped on him, but great food. And, um, and once again, lemoncello spritzes galore. You can see a few of them there already. Um, and you can see everybody stuff in their faces. Good food. Good food. It was really good. Here is the, uh, the Pantheon. Um, what vehicle did we use to travel all sorts of different vehicles? So we had a bus, uh, that took us some places in Rome. Uh, like when we went over to the Vatican, we took a bus. Uh, it was a private bus, like a coach, you know, like a tour bus. Um, sometimes we took a train. Sometimes we took uh, uh, public train, like the public local train. Um, so a little bit of everything. Uh, Pantheon was amazing, uh, beautiful. You know, this amazing 2,000-year-old uh temple and then later a church uh there is um the grave of Raphael. uh you've heard of Raphael and know not that the ninja turtle but uh he's buried there as is oh yeah there's the uh they were talking about how people would do that like kind of do the um like make your hair glow your head glow kind of thing there uh so i guess i didn't take more pictures i did video in there so you'll see video from the pantheon um but victor emmanuel the 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 king the first king of a united italy is buried in there uh so here again this is the um what's known as, so there's these four temples uh, the remains of these temples and this one was later a church um, uh, but this is the site of the, uh, Curio of Pompey, the Curia of Pompey. Uh, and right here where you're looking, this is the exact spot where Julius Caesar was assassinated. They just opened it to the public, um, last fall. Uh, and you can't actually go down into this spot, but right here to the right of this tree is the spot. And how do we know that's the spot? Uh, well, we, first of all, we know that this is where the Curia of Pompey was. Um, and behind me from the view that I'm looking here uh, would have been where the Senate theater was, where the senators were sitting. Uh, and then Julius Caesar would have been in a chair on this spot. And where, that's where he was first stabbed was while he was sitting. Uh, and the reason we know this spot is because later on when Augustus is emperor and, you know, he's, he's the adopted son of Julius Caesar and his grand nephew biologically uh, Augustus had a monument placed on the exact spot where Caesar was killed and then walled up the Curia of Pompey and declared it to be a cursed place because that's where his father was killed. Uh, so they were able to find the remnants of that monument that Augustus had placed. So that's how they know that this is the spot. Um, Uh, so, uh, what did history just say? Um, I should compile these and make an Italy. Oh, uh, yeah. I, I, I shot video at all these places. So, there will be videos coming out from this stuff. Absolutely. Um, was Shakespeare's version of the assassination accurate at all? Um, it was based on the accurate one. So, basically... Um, Here's the Cliff Notes version of what happened. Caesar goes in. The conspiracy involves somewhere between 60 and 70 senators, I think, is the number. It was like it was a massive number of senators. Um, I think at the time of Caesar, there were either six or nine hundred senators. I can't remember. There, there were like a lot of senators, uh, but at least a tenth of them were involved in this. Uh, and this guy walks up and he starts asking Julius Caesar about his brother who has been exiled and whether or not that can, his exile can be re overturned. And, uh, and then he kind of puts his hand on Caesar. It's the way it's shown in HBO's Rome kind of. Um, and then the first stab a wound comes down on him, I think hits him in the shoulder or something while he's in the chair. And then others start coming up and stabbing him. Um, I believe the fatal stab wound came to the groin is the one that eventually did him in. Um, but I'm doing this off, off the top of my head. So, but I think basically that's what it is, but this is where Julius Caesar was sitting. Uh, and yeah, I, I did uh, make a little joke um, 
on an Instagram post and say that this is the Coke can that was placed by Augustus to mark the spot. The Coke can of Caesar. Yeah. So we all kind of joked about that a little bit. Um, I guess murder's not funny, but you know, it happened 2000 years ago. So I think enough time has passed. Um, yeah. So that's the spot. Uh, so here we are. There's the cake. That's the infamous cake that had only a minute or so left to live because right after Joe blew out his candle, uh, the guy, uh, this guy here who was the owner picked it up and then he dropped it. It hit Joe in the shoulder and then flipped upside down and hit the ground. Uh, so yeah, RIP to the cake. All right. So this is the church that is, um, the home of the Jesuit order. And it was gorgeous. I mean, this is one of the most beautiful churches I've ever been in. Uh, Caesar's not buried. Caesar, like most Romans at that time, was cremated. Uh, and so his ashes are gone, literally, you know, scattered to the wind at this point. Um, so, yeah, here, look at, I mean, just look at that. I mean, and pictures can't do justice to some of these places. They just can't. You just have to see them. Uh, and we actually weren't even, it, this wasn't planned. We were walking around in our free time after we went to the site where Caesar was assassinated. We were walking back to our hotel and we saw the church. And so I took a picture of it and Google Googled the image and found out it was the home of the Jesuit order. So we walked in and they were actually finishing up a, a mass. You can see right here uh, as we walked in and oh my goodness, it was beautiful. There's the ceiling there. Honestly, I was more I hate to say it, but I was more impressed by this ceiling than I was by the Sistine Chapel. Um, so, yeah, so the Je uh, the Jesuits, is that is that not what I said? I think that's what I said. Um, yeah. So, yeah, oh, my gosh, it was just, just amazing. Um, and, and you'll hear me say that over and over again. So, um, Marcus Aurelius. Statue of Marcus Aurelius uh, that we got to see, and then some amazing views of the Forum area uh, from here. And look at in this picture, you can see um, this is the Arch of is that the Arch of Titus? I can't remember now off the top of my head. That might be a different one. Um, but you can see the whole form. You see the Colosseum over here off in the distance. I did not throw a coin in the Trevi fountain. I did not have any coins with me at the time. So, um, but yeah, I just, uh, again, the views can't do justice to what that place looked like. Um, I talked about this site earlier already. Um, yeah, there were some gelato that I had. Uh, I think that was the night that we were watching. We went into a little local cafe and had dinner late that night. And we were watching Roma and AC Milan playing in the Europa League on TV. Um, all right. So this is the Tiber River. And there's the wall of the Vatican. This was the day that we go to the uh, to the Vatican. Uh, most memorable part of the trip. Oh, there's there's no one memorable part, but for me, my favorite part was Pompeii. Pompeii blew away my expectations. Maybe that's not the best term I should use when talking about Pompeii, but so that arch, Joseph. That I think then that was the arch for Severus. Uh, not Titus, because Titus was in a different spot. Um, yeah, so here's here's our trip to the Vatican. Uh, oh, again, uh, amazing. There's St. Peter's. That was our first glimpse of St. Peter's. Um, no, we did not visit the tomb of Biggest Dickus. Uh, it's a, that's a reference for those who don't know uh, to Monty Python's Life of Brian. Tom Cruise did run up that wall in MI3. Uh, no, did not go to Herculaneum, and I'll talk about that more when we get to Pompeii. Um, awesome. First time catching a stream. Glad you're here. Uh, if you have questions not related to uh, the stuff I'm talking about with Rome and Italy uh, and all that, 
save them for the end. I'll try to get to those. Uh, <laughs> John, <laughs> we'll talk about that when we get to that part. VTH after dark. Um, it's not so much that you're not supposed to tip, uh, but it's not expected the way that it is in the United States. The U.S. is actually pretty rare in uh, our tipping culture for restaurants. We're one of the few places where that's even done. Uh, that's not to say we didn't tip. We tipped uh, Elena, our fantastic tour guide that you see here. We tipped Mark. Um, we tipped our bus driver, things like that. There was not a hot tub in Italy. However, uh, in about six weeks, I'm headed to Belgium and there is a hot tub there. So that's coming. Um, yeah, so this is us uh, in our uh, tour of the Vatican. This is inside the Vatican here. Uh, so we're talking about the Sistine Chapel before we go in. And of course, can't take pictures in the Sistine Chapel, so you're not going to see any pictures uh, of that. But uh, just every place you go in the Sistine Chapel, they had, I mean, we are in the, in the Vatican. We just walked through room after room after room of ancient Greek relics, Roman relics, stuff from the Renaissance. I mean, you name it, it was in there. Uh, just room after room of stuff like this. And eventually, you know, it just all kind of runs together because you just get numb to, to how much of it there is. Um, yeah, JD did say he's not getting in the hot tub and knowing JD as well as I do, I think that that's probably uh, an accurate assessment of the situation. Um, no, we did not get to meet the Pope. Uh, and so, like I said, just room after room of this stuff. Uh, so this right here is the, this is actually the sarcophagus of St. Helena, who was Constantine's mother. Uh, I don't think she's still inside of it, but this is her sarcophagus, and it's actually on display in the Vatican. Sven, heard talking about Pompeii. A question to ask, was there any stories or tales that humanized the people who lived there for you? Uh, yeah, there there are, and it, it relates to a couple of the people who we saw the, the plaster casts of their bodies. And I'll talk about that when I get to those pictures. Um, so here again, these are, you can see how many people there are in these crowds. And these are kind of the, the galleries that you walk through on your way to the Sistine Chapel. Uh, and you're like just cattle um, kind of going through. Uh, no, did not get to see. The, well, I take that back. I saw a few papal tombs, the ones that are on the ground floor in St. Uh, Peter's. And you'll see pictures of a few of those. Um the ones down below, you have to get tickets for those. And I started checking three months ago and they were already sold out. Um, so those are really hard to get because they're super limited and they're only guided tours and they're only small groups that they do. Um, but uh, here you see some Greek on that one there. Um, yeah, so unfortunately, I just couldn't get down there for that. Uh, but like I said, just room after room. Of course, I had to find the place where Ohio was mentioned in the Vatican. So there you have that. Um, Pope Mon Pope wanted to meet Chris, but he was with Martin Sheen. Martin Sheen, who's also Catholic, so um, yeah, I just like I said, just room after room of this stuff, and I I, I took pictures of maybe like one one thousandth of what we saw in these places, but these collections. Uh, there's Pope Leo the Thirteenth. These collections just are, they boggle the mind. Uh, these tapestries were incredible. Here's a room full of these tapestries. Uh, you can see there uh, how they did these um, incredible kind of 3D art on the ceilings. Uh, oh, yeah, and I had to take a picture of this because we were like, yeah, hey, there's uh, Jesus rising from the dead, and he's got an English flag because uh, there's England's flag right there, but no, it's not. It's the cross of St. George. But, uh, but again, look at these ceilings. And then you had these maps, these incredibly detailed maps uh, along these walls. Uh, oh, gosh, it was so crazy. Um, you only joined late. Was Rome the only city? No, we went to Rome, 
Florence uh, and Pompeii were kind of our main stops. Ohio reference drink, yes. Um, so yeah, these maps were really cool. Oh yeah, I had to take a picture of this. This is in the Vatican. Can anybody tell me what this scene is? Uh, and don't say anything if you were on the tour. Yes, Joe, thank you. We also went to Casino, and you'll see those pictures as well. We did not go to Venice, not on this trip. Some of the people that were on the tour with me did go to Venice before our tour started. Um, where are you going next year, and how can we sign up? Right now, the only already scheduled tour is Egypt in March, and it's sold out. Um, there will be more. I'm going to do a Western Front tour in November, and I'm working on some other tours. Uh, at some point, we want to do China. We want to do Peru. I'll do another Italy trip uh, for sure because uh, that one was great, and I definitely would love to take another group back to Italy. Uh, there it is. You got it. Then the winged hussars arrived. Yes, this is. And actually, it was cool because uh, Elena, our uh, tour guide, asked. And I, like I knew right away who it was. That's Pope Jan III Sobieski right there. There you see the winged hussars. This is the um, this is the end of the Battle of Vienna in 1683. Um, okay. So this, okay. So now that I didn't know until after I took this picture that we weren't supposed to take a picture here. Um, but this is right outside of the Sistine Chapel. The Sistine Chapel is just to our right here. And this is after we exited. Um, Stephen, thank you for that. Looking forward to coming to Egypt. Um, uh, okay. So, Oh yeah, I took a picture of this because this window that you see here in the in the ceiling, when they have a papal election, they set up the the stove where they burn the ballots and create the smoke, either white or black smoke, um, to signal whether they've elected a pope. Uh, this is where they put the pipe for that. It goes right up through here uh, when there's a papal election. Uh, yeah, you're right. Uh, Vashek is right. Uh, that picture uh, is in a room just before the Sistine Chapel, the one of the Wing Tassars. Uh, okay, so here we are now outside of, this is the entrance to St. Peter's Basilica, the largest church in the world. I think 15,000 square meters. Uh, and I definitely wish we would have had more time in there. Um, we, we didn't have a ton of time in St. Peter's. Um Yes, they have elections there. Um, the Vatican is, as Joe pointed out when we were there, the only elective absolute monarchy on the planet. So, yeah. Uh, yes, the plaza area there is incredible. Um, th this church is so big that where we're standing, you can't even see the dome from there. Um, so, yeah, and there's the plaza area looking out in the other direction. And there's our tour group getting ready to go in. Uh, here's the entrance to St. Peter's. And again, pictures cannot do this place justice. Just a staggering, staggering beauty in this place. Um, I'm trying to get to a particular. So there's Michelangelo's Pieta. Uh, really, really famous work of art. I don't know how they choose the Dalai Lama, but the Dalai Lama is not an elected monarch, uh, absolute monarch. So that's kind of the difference, I suppose. Uh, the seats were there because when the Pope does a mass outside, that's where the seating is for that. Um, I have not visited the Hagia Sophia. I have not been to Istanbul, but definitely would like it to go. Um Agree with you, John. Uh, just wow. Just wow, 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 wow. Is all I can say about St. Peter's. Uh, and there's the dome from the inside. And again, like I said, these, these pictures cannot do justice to how massive this complex is. 
Uh, so here is, uh, this is actually the body of one of the popes. Uh, they actually have some of the bodies on display. Uh, there's a there's a mask over his face so you don't see his mummified remains there. But that is the actual body. Um, oh, okay, so there, there's the dome there. That's a good picture of the dome. Um, this scaffolding is an area they're doing some construction work, but this area right here is directly above the tomb of Peter. And if I was able to get tickets to go down underneath, you can actually go down there and see the actual tomb. Um, Pope Benedict X, is that who that one was, Joe? Uh, did not get to go up in the dome. Uh, so there's St. Longinus. So uh, you see the spear. Longinus is said to be the man who stabbed Jesus in the side uh, at his crucifixion, as described in the Gospels. Uh, so that's why you see the image of him with a spear. He's said to have been martyred afterwards uh, when, after becoming a Christian. Uh, here's another pope. That's Pope Innocent XI, uh, his body. Uh, that is Pius the 10th. Uh, and I did, I don't have the picture here. I don't think in this collection, but I did post it on Instagram of me kneeling in the spot where Charlemagne was crowned Holy Roman emperor on Christmas day, 800. They pointed out to us the exact site. There was an earlier St. Peter's to the one that is there. Now the one that's there now was the one that was built in the 16th century. Um, so, but it was built on the site of the old, older one, but there's a big red circle that marks the spot where Charlemagne was crowned. So we, we, we all took pictures of ourselves kneeling on that spot. Um, James the third, uh, if you're familiar with the Jacobites and their claim to the throne of England or of the Uni United Kingdom now, I guess it would be. Um, James the third ended up dying, uh, being buried at the Vatican. Uh, and this is his grave, Jacob being the Latin for James. Um, I don't think we saw Alexander the sixth. I can't remember for sure if we did or not. Uh, if we did, I don't think I got a picture of it. Uh, a couple of the Swiss guards there. They take their jobs very seriously. Have I considered paid Zoom discussions? I, I don't know. I don't know what that would look like. Um, again, there's some outside pictures of St. Peter's. Uh, so this was me testing out the Zoom on my camera because <laughs> I've got the Galaxy S24. And... Um, this was zoomed in, I think, like 80x zoom to take this picture. So it just, it, I just wanted to see how it come out, and it came out pretty good. Um, all right, so again, now you can start to see the dome a little bit on St. Peter's in that picture there. Uh, so I believe at this point, this is where we're actually outside of Vatican city limits. And so there's this big walkway, and you can actually see Castel Sant'Angelo in the distance. So uh, if you're familiar with the story of the last stand from 1527, when the Swiss guard uh, kind of had their last stand, the one that Sabaton sings about, you can't see it here. And I don't think I took a picture of it. Um, no, I didn't. Uh, but just to our left here behind these buildings, there's a walkway that connects the Vatican to Castel Sant'Angelo. And that is where that fight would have taken place uh, is, is in that spot. Uh, there's Elena, our tour guide. She was fantastic. She was great. And man, she didn't take crap from anybody. I, I mean, all the tourists around us. Like if somebody was out of line, she told them. Uh, I couldn't help but take this picture because there was Harry Potter and Game of Thrones and Hobbit stuff for sale in the gift shop right outside the Vatican. Uh, and there's my lemon gelato that I had there. It was fantastic. Um, see, this is us at the train station on our way to Florence. Uh, so here's our first views of the Italian countryside as we head into Tuscany, uh, which was absolutely gorgeous. These are the walls of Florence. Uh, my first view of that. 
Uh, that's the river there in Florence. Uh, these are all the passports of everybody that was on the trip. Not all of them, but most of them. Uh, we The weather was hot, but it was otherwise good. Um, so this is us sitting around the table for our uh, first dinner in Florence. Uh, this was right across from our hotel, um, right along the river there. There was uh, this uh, area. Uh, where is this? Oh, yeah. So when we were on our way to a farm in Tuscany, which was kind of the one big non-history thing we did. And I think everybody loved it. Yes, Italy is beautifully uh, beautiful. Absolutely. Um, no, the church did not try to get Harry Potter banned. Some very extremely conservative fundamentalist Christians did. Um, but that kind of died out. Uh, so we actually made a stop, an unexpected stop at the Florence American Cemetery. About 5,000 Americans buried there, including a lot of uh, fighter and bomber crews uh, are buried there. Uh, so that was that was a nice little surprise that we got to stop uh, and see the Florence American Cemetery. Uh, we were only there for maybe 10, 15 minutes. I did notice this, and I thought this was interesting. Most of the American cemeteries that I've been to in Europe... Uh, they have this exact same cross, but it says here rests in honor, glory, an American soldier known but to God. But in this cemetery, and I'm not sure why, it says a comrade in arms known but to God. Not sure why. Uh, yes, actually, in that dinner uh, that I just showed you the pictures of, we did have steak. Many of us had steak that night. Um, no, I mean, none of it was enough time. Jonathan, in those places. Uh, we were two days in Florence, but um, not nearly enough to see everything. That's why I definitely need to go back. Um, yeah, so yeah, so it was it was really nice and unexpected that and again, that's just why our tour guide, our tour our group guide Mark was so fantastic to help kind of make those kinds of opportunities happen for us. Uh, this was one of the highest ranking guys that we found. He was a major uh, from the 12th Air Force from Tennessee. Uh, yes, we did see the House of Medici in Florence. Uh, so again, here we are in Tuscany. This was such a cool thing. Uh, so what we did was we went to this farm in Tuscany, about, I don't know, 20 minutes outside of Florence, uh, where they raise or where they, they grow olives and create make olive oil. Uh, they grow grapes and make their own wine. Uh, a couple thousand bottles of wine a year they make there. Um, they had goats, uh, and do their own milk, their own cheese. Uh, they had a little store where you could buy all the stuff. And let me tell you, I think everyone agreed that the food there at this farm that we ate, that was all produced right there was fantastic. I think it was the best meal that we had our entire time in Italy. Uh, yeah. So <laughs> Mike is saying I ate his, this was kind of a joke we had because Chianti is made in this where we were in Florence or outside of Florence in Tuscany, this is where Chianti comes from. And this farm grew, grew fava beans. And so we were making the jokes from Hannibal Lecter about, I ate his liver with some fava beans and the nice Chianti, <laughs> you know, he does that whole thing. So, um, uh, drinking age in Italy is probably 18, like it is in most of Europe, I think. Um, so, yeah, let me just show you some of the pictures from this. Uh, it, it was such a cool thing. And the, and the views are just out of hand. Uh, gorgeous, this place was. Uh, would absolutely do this part again. If, when I do another Italy trip, definitely going to do this again. It was a great experience that we had. Um, there's the table where we ate uh, outside. Uh, it just I get chills thinking about it. This was just such a great experience. It really was. It gave us a chance. You have to get outside the big cities when you go to Europe. If you really want to experience, it's just like in the United States. If you go to New York City, you haven't seen the United States. You've seen New York City. You haven't experienced local American culture. Uh, just like any big city in any country is going to be different than the countryside. Um, yeah, so uh, this was our, our uh, the lady who who led us on our tour. I apologize for getting her name. Maybe one of the folks 
uh, in the chat who was with us can remember this. Um, but oh my gosh, yeah, there's this. Uh, this is a picture uh, that I'm definitely going to have hanging up on my wall um, because oh. Uh, yeah, just look at look at that view. Look at that view. How incredible that is. And I don't mean the part with me in it. I mean the rest of it. There's a cow. I love cows. So some vineyards there. I, I think she told us that some of these these ones here were about 20 years old. And she's just showing us how they would prune them and keep them, you know, healthy. Uh, there's Randy from uh, Northeast Ohio, watching it there. Uh, yeah, 100%, Steve, not realizing how hilly Manchester is until you go there. Um, yeah, again, there's more views of us just kind of looking around, enjoying it. Uh, this is where we went inside where they feed the animals. Here come the sheep toward us. Uh, she just whistled at them, and they immediately came up. Um. The dog was enjoying a nice little piece of shade. This is where they uh, they make the wine in there. Uh, I think that's an olive oil press right there, an old one. Uh, so here now you're going to see some of our food that we have. Um, this is uh, some bread with olive oil on it. Always a good choice. That was the first wine we had, uh, and that again, all the all this stuff was made there. Uh, th this is wine that they made at at the place that we were visiting, so it was really cool. There's me and Michael. Michael's in the chat. Uh, uh, yeah. Did they? I assume you mean did they give us? Yes, uh, we did have samples. Like I said, of all the the stuff, this lasagna uh, that they made from local ingredients that they had there was really good as well. Um, so here's us heading back. Everybody's tired from being out in the sun. Um, now we're heading into Florence. Uh, there's the river as we walk into Florence. There's the American consulate in Florence. Um, so, yeah, I'll just show you a few of the sites in Florence here. Um, when they make wine, do they stomp on grapes? No, they have, I think they have presses for that now. Uh, did we go wine tasting in Florence? No, but we did have wine in Florence. <laughs> John says, great, me sleeping, wonderful. We were all sleeping. Uh, it wasn't just you, don't worry. Um, all right, so here's some more views of Florence. Uh, um, there's our first view, and again, pictures cannot do justice to this basilica. Uh, if you've ever seen the TV show um, about the Medici's, the one that star stars um, Mark Ma is Mark Madden, is that? Oh gosh, um, the guy that played uh, um, I can I, I blank out whenever I do streams. Um, yeah, uh, Game of Thrones, um, Stark, Rob Stark. Um, Richard Madden. Thank you, Joe. Um, I do not think Florence is overrated at all. Um, so, uh, if you've seen the one with Richard Madden where he plays Cosimo de' Medici, um, they, they cover, they do the story in that first season of building that dome, the Duomo as they call it. Um, and this church is just massive and beautiful and all the green and, and everything you see there is marble, the green and the red, it's all marble. Yeah. And if you, if you played, I, we, we talked about Assassin's Creed two a lot when we were in Florence, cause everybody kept noticing sites that they recognized from Assassin's Creed two. Um, so this is the baptistry right here. Um, to the right, uh, just you can see just a part of the the baptistry there, um, but you'll see a lot more pictures of the of the basilica as we go along. Uh, and this right here in the foreground is the bell tower, and that's also not a part of the church; it's separate. There's the bell tower there. 
Yeah, Brunelleschi's Dome is absolutely beautiful. That's right. Uh, it's a gorgeous church. It really, really is. All right, so this was like an all-time moment for these guys. So uh, a few of us, I think it ended up being four of us who were there. Um, it was Brandon, who you see here. Uh, is from North Carolina. Uh, and Joe, who's in the chat. Uh, and then myself and Dominic, we went to Mass. There was an English Mass that they had in the cathedral. I'm not Catholic, neither is Dominic, but I wasn't going to miss that opportunity uh, to attend uh, a religious service in such a beautiful place. Uh, and so then the, the the priest came in and was looking for a couple of people to do readings. And so the two guys that were Catholic that were with our group uh, that were in there for that. John, did you go too? I'm sorry. Yeah, I just was. I just realized as I was saying that that I know John's also Catholic. Uh, and that you were there as well. Um, uh, so the three that were Catholic and then myself and Dominic, uh, and there may have been others in our group that were Catholic, but they didn't go. Uh, but two of them got to do readings during the service. So Brandon did. And so I snuck my, my phone out and took a couple pictures of Brandon and Joe doing the readings. And they both did a fantastic job uh, reading. They were definitely really good choices for that. Uh, so that was cool for them. And there's the dome inside of uh, the Basilica there. Uh, yeah, it was a great experience. I'm so glad that I got to do it. Um, Thomas, I agree 100% with you about that. They don't make them like they used to, as as they say. Um, so we didn't actually get to tour the, the cathedral because it was closed on Sunday, which was the day we would have had time to do that. But we did get to see it at least. But there's the dome again. Uh, so now this, and again, we didn't get to go in here because of time. We had tickets to go in, and then they didn't open on time, and we had to leave. Uh, but this is the Church of Santa Croce, Holy Cross. Uh, and inside of there are the tombs of Galileo, My, uh, Galileo, Michelangelo. Um, I know there's more. Um, uh, Machiavelli. And there's at least one more really famous person who's in there. Oh, Amerigo Vespucci, the guy who is uh, the namesake of America. Um, so yeah, so that was, uh, unfortunate. We didn't get to go in there, but still really cool. Again, if you've seen Assassin's Creed, you probably played Assassin's Creed too. You probably recognize that. Um, and yeah, there, so there's, uh, I think that's one of the Medici's there. Can't remember off the top of my head, which one it is. Uh, Loret it's a cause. Yeah, it's Cosimo. Okay. That's Cosimo de Medici. Uh, yeah, lots of uh, really interesting artwork at that time. Uh, a lot of it involving, uh, this is my hotel, uh, a lot of it involving penises. Um, all right, so now uh, that's also a picture I really like. I, I think that one came out good. So this bridge we're on here, I guess I didn't get a good picture of it. I did get video of it. Um but this is the only bridge that survived the bombing of World War II. Uh, so most of the other bridges in Florence were destroyed during World War II. Um, but what you see here, uh, so this is kind of like London Bridge, right? Where you've got like buildings on the bridge, uh, the old London Bridge, not the current one. Um, and there would be like meat markets and things like that. Uh, and so the Medici's lived on one side of the river and had their offices on the other and so they would cross this bridge to go into the city. Uh, and so they had this separate elevated crossing for themselves. But then they didn't like the smell of the meat from the meat markets. And so they had the meat markets banned. And now you can only uh, operate a business on this bridge, I think, if you're selling gold or silver. And so all of the businesses there are gold or silver bridges. Um, but yeah, yeah, so that was really cool to see that. No, we didn't really see. I think we th saw a few things for the Borghese's in Rome, but not a lot. But that's a view from that bridge. And that's us doing our tour on the bridge. And so, again, here's some more pictures. Uh, this is the door uh, to the baptistry, which a lot of these things that you're going to see are actually replicas. And the originals are in a museum rather than out here. So, like, this door 
uh, the original is safely in a museum somewhere and this is not the original door. Um, same thing with Michelangelo's Michael. No, not is it Michael? Yeah. David, uh, which you'll see here in just a minute. There's the David. Uh, that is not the original. The original stood on that site, but I think about a hundred years ago was moved to a museum. This is a replica of it. Um, yeah, just some more sites from Florence there. This was our uh, closing dinner that we had. That's just a picture I took there. You walk outside of where we had our dinner on the last night of the official part of the tour, and there's the remains of a uh, aqueduct right outside of our uh, thing there. This is uh, the theater district. There's our tour guide, Mark, our group guide, who was fantastic. Um, that's us just sitting around for a few drinks afterwards. I don't know. Oh, this was Jonathan covering um, a spill on his pants where it looked like he wet himself. Uh, so we went out that night then. Uh, the original of the David is not in the Louvre. No, I think it's in a museum right there in Florence. Um, but uh, we walked over to the Colosseum at like midnight that night, our last night in Rome. Uh, and we were able to get some some great pictures there. So that was cool. Um, that is the Arch of Constantine there at night. Oh, yeah. Somebody, for some reason, made me do a thumbs up. So I did like the fonds. I was like, hey, that picture will not be published anywhere. Um, yeah, again, just some more of the Colosseum. There's one with the moon. Uh, and then on our way to Casino. And there is Monte Casino. So if you're familiar with World War II... Um, the battle for Monte Cassino, we visited the, uh, the monastery up on top of the hill. There's a view from the bottom of the hill. Uh, and again, does not do justice to how high up it was. Uh, so this guy, um, I might have the video here and let me see if I do. No, I don't. Uh, so this guy, he was Italian. He lived there in Cassino. Um, he came up to us and he was talking to Matteo, who you see there on the right, who was, Italian that was in our group. Uh, and then he started singing a song that he knew in English. And so I recorded a video and uploaded it to Instagram of him singing the song in English. It was really cool. Um, but what's cool about going to a place like Casino is you're getting away from the tourist traps. And now you're into real Italian culture. You could tell the difference in the accent people had when they spoke. A um, lot fewer people spoke English there. Um, kind of a small town feel. Uh, I've been to Maine. Awkward potato. Uh, so this face is being made because this guy had a death wish. The guy who drove the bus, the little bus that we were on, going up to the top of Monte Casino, uh, was flying around those hairpin turns. And if we had flipped, we would have gone right over the side to a horrible death. Um, so, yeah, I'll, I'll talk about that, Adam, in just a minute. Um, so here's a view from the top of Monte Casino. So this uh, this this Benedictine Abbey and St. Benedict for whom the Benedictines are named is buried there. Um, he is the patron saint of Europe. Um, this Benedictine Abbey was from the sixth century. It's 1500 years old. And uh, so during World War II, long story short, you'll hear about it more in my video that I made from the site. Um, there, the, the Germans set up a series of defensive lines in Italy as the allies were attacking their way up the Italian peninsula. And one of them is known as the, um, Oh gosh, I'm drawing a blank again. Um, whenever I stream, I can't do this, but, um, somebody will say it in the chat before I can remember it. Um, the Gustav line. I, I remembered it before it showed up in the chat. So this is the Gustav line. And one of the Hills that anchored the Gustav line, was Monte Cassino, where this basilica is. And um, the uh, the Allies were having trouble breaking through. They start attacking in January of 1944. And so by February, they're not really getting anywhere. And they're not attacking directly up the hill. They're attacking from the east along a ridge line to get at it. But they're taking casualties. They're not getting anywhere. And so the Americans become convinced that the Germans are using this abbey 
as an artillery spotting location. But the Germans have communicated through the Vatican to let them know. Uh, and I believe uh, the German general is, um, I knew all of this when we were there and now I can't remember any of it. Um, but the German general had communicated to the Vatican that no, we're not using it. We respect this historic site. We're not, we're not, stationing troops in there. The only people who were in there were a couple of hundred civilians who had taken refuge there. Um, so the allies finally decide to bomb it, the Americans specifically. And so they drop like a thousand tons of bombs on this abbey and just blow it to smithereens. They kill hundreds of civilians, but all they did was create a bunch of rubble, which the Germans then did occupy. And so it's one of those unfortunate instances where it did nothing of any military value. It killed a bunch of civilians and in the process destroyed an incredibly beautiful Kessel Ring. Yes, that Kessel Ring is, is the one. Thank you. Um, so I knew all this at the time when we were there. I just forgot it now. So, um, but uh, so, yeah, so they rebuild it. Uh, and again, you want to talk about uh, just this museum inside of here we thought it was going to be this little museum and we paid like five euros to go in like 10 of us. And we ended up spending like an hour in there and didn't even see everything. Uh, yeah. The, the rubble did make it easier to defend. Yes. Um, uh, no, uh, you can't just blanket statement, say the Germans didn't care about historical sites or artifacts. Many of them did. And Kessel ring absolutely did. Uh, and like I said, he communicated to the Vatican. The Americans didn't know it, but he communicated to the Vatican. Listen, we respect this site. We're not going to use it to, to house our troops. Um, so, yeah, they, they absolutely, in many instances, did respect these sites. And many of the German soldiers were Catholic. Um, so let's not forget that, too. Um, OK, so let's continue on here with this. Uh, so these are just some of the sites inside of the Abbey, uh, which again was beautiful. And uh, look at that. I mean, just look at that. Oh my gosh. Every li little church we went into was like this. Uh, yes, this is Monte Cassino, Archie. Um, so down here, uh, now we're into, this is where the, the uh, tomb of St. Benedict is down here. Uh, in this area that you're looking at. Uh, this is down in the chapel where the tomb of St. Benedict is. And I did a video uh, at all these sites. So there's going to be a video specific for Monte Casino. And again, here's the inside of this chapel. Just uh, just the, the detail, uh, just out of hand in these places. Uh, so now you get into, so like here's the, the ring of Pius II. And you have all of these little, uh, just room after room after room of these artifacts like this. And I, I filmed a lot of it. Uh, so a lot of these coins you see here are 1,500 years old. Uh, and like I said, just room after room of this. This is a papal bull from 1767, Pope Clement the Thirteenth. They, they had in the museum there. Um, this is uh, this belonged to Pope. Leo X, who was uh, Giovanni de' Medici. Uh, and there's a whole stack of these, these things here. Um, yeah, just nuts. Absolutely nuts. And this was just kind of telling the story of the fighting for Monte Cassino. Monte Cassino was eventually taken by Polish troops. Uh, it was Polish troops who took Monte Cassino in May of 1944. And so it was the Polish troops who were given the honor of having their cemetery up there on Monte Cassino. Um, and here's a, a distant view of the, the Polish cemetery, but you'll see a closer view of it here in just a minute. And again, I did, I did make a video from all of these sites. So I will get those up to you when we can. Uh, and there you see, it says peace. And uh, what's cool about this site is when you go to the graves, and this is the lieutenant general who commanded the troops that took Monte Cassino. When he died in 1970 in London, he had his remains uh, interred at this Polish cemetery with his troops. There's a view from the Polish cemetery of Monte Cassino. Um, and again, just such a cool, 
place. Um, and then there's me standing at the Polish cemetery. Um, uh, so each of the graves of these soldiers who died in the fight for Monte Cassino, it gave where they were born. And we found one that was born in New Jersey. Uh, so it was pretty neat. And then it, there's, again, a view of Monte Cassino from the ground. Uh, how many are buried in the cemetery? It's just over a thousand uh, that are buried there. Is there anything that shocked or surprised me when we went? Uh, the, Monte Cassino specifically or just Italy in general? Mm. One of the things that surprised me was just how much of this stuff remains. And in many cases, how well preserved it is under the circumstances for being 2000 years old. Uh, one thing that really shocked me was the collection the Vatican has uh, of relics, which would rival any museum. And it was like going to the British museum. It was crazy how much they had in their private collection. Um, but this stuff is just everywhere. Um, so, uh, so then, okay. So, we were going to walk to from our hotel and casino to the British War Cemetery Casino. Joe had never been to a Commonwealth War Graves Commission cemetery. So we wanted to take him to one. We ended up not making it there before it closed. Because when I looked at the map, I saw that there were these Roman ruins in Casino from the former Roman city that had been there, including an arena that you could visit and the remains of the tombs outside of the city. So we went there, and so you'll see some of the pictures. Um, so Roman tombs, uh, Roman law forbid the burial of human remains within the city limits. And so tombs were built outside the city, and so you would often have these kind of roads that just were lined with tombs, like the Appian Way in Rome, or like this one that we visited here. And... Um, These are some of the, the stuff from that. This is the Roman arena. And I don't have the picture yet because Matteo still has not sent us the pictures. They were taken on his camera. But every one of us in our group had a picture of us by ourselves standing in the middle of the arena. Uh, so it was a cool sight. This, this arena, it's kind of a mini version of the Colosseum. And it would hold about 4,500 people. And there would have been bleachers all the way around here, wooden bleachers. Um, so there's a view, a really distant view about an 80 X, uh, zoom that I did on my camera of the British cemetery that I took from a distance. So there you can see the guys starting to walk down there before we started taking pictures. Um, that's down in the arena. And again, I did a video of all of this. So you'll get to see video of these sites. Um, are you not entertained? Yes. We all definitely said that when we were there <laughs> for sure. Um, but yeah, just really cool. And there, there are sites like this all over Italy. I think something like half of all the UNESCO World Heritage sites in the world are in Italy. That's outside of it. Uh, so this right here is the remains of the museum or of the mausoleum of this woman named Umidia Quattratilia. Um, and uh, this is like eighteen hundred, I know, nineteen hundred year old mausoleum that was later turned into a church. Uh, so then this is us eating uh, in this guy had a magnificent mustache. Uh, this was our last night in. Um, where was this? This was in Casino um, before we headed to Pompeii the next day. Uh, there's our first view of Mount Vesuvius as we were coming into Naples. Which city had the best food? Oh, great question. Naples. Or not Naples, Pompeii, of the places that we ate. That mo was definitely real. All right, so here we are in Pompeii. And believe me when I tell you, you need a minimum of two days, probably three, to really explore Pompeii. It is huge. I really underestimated how massive that site was and how much there was to see uh, and how little of it we could see even in four or five hours. Uh, yes, correct. The last time uh, Mount Vesuvius erupted was 1944. Uh, but look at how well-preserved some of this stuff is. 
And it, so Pompeii is a city of somewhere between 10 and 15,000 people at the time of the eruption in 79 AD. Uh, it's pretty much buried right where it is. And for the most part, left undisturbed with some minor disturbances until the 1800s. But yes, Vesuvius is still an active volcano. Um, and yes, we did see some of the archaeological work while we were there. Uh, so I'll, I'll skip through because I took a ton of pictures. And I, I think I have 170 video clips from Pompeii in total. Um, so here we are kind of in the main um, forum of Pompeii when you walk in. And some of these sites, like what you're seeing here, this was built in 200 BC. This is 2,200 years old. What we're, what you're looking at? Uh, yeah, there was a there were a lot of poppies at Pompeii, um, and yes, we saw some graffiti as well. Um, so I'm just yeah. There's Vesuvius. There's a really good view of Vesuvius uh, with Pompeii. Some of these places are homes that we're in. Some of the homes of these people were massive. We visited one home, the home of the Fawn, um, 3,000 square meters. That's like a small department store. No, uh, ancient graffiti. Someone should do a movie about Pompeii. Um, yes, they, they have, and, and it wasn't good. Um, so there's uh, just some of the stuff you see on the walls. It's crazy. Okay, thank you for that. Uh, I just know somebody somebody told us when we were there that um, the Italy had half of the World Heritage sites, but I guess not. Yeah, so there are eleven hundred and ninety nine of them, and uh, Italy has the most with fifty nine. But yeah, definitely not, um, not half for sure. Um, okay, uh, where were we? Uh, let's continue here. Uh, like I said, there's so many of these pictures. So this is basically like a fast food place that you're looking at right here. Uh, these circles is where they would have the, the food. So hot food, hot drinks you could get on your way to work or on your way wherever you were. Uh, and that's that's actually what these places are that you're looking at. So there's one of the plaster casts um, that very often actually still include parts of the body. Um that they did of the people who were kind of frozen in place when they were buried in ash. Um, most of the people, like I said, there were about 10 to 15,000 people living in Pompeii. They think the vast majority of them did escape and did survive. They found somewhere around 1500 bodies so far, or rem remains of bodies. Uh, and what they did was they would inject these the plaster into these so they could kind of show the form of, of the, the, the form of how these people were when they died. Most of the people uh, died either from earthquakes, like from collapsing buildings. They found a lot of broken backs, things like that. Um, but most of the others died from heat. Originally, they thought from suffocation, but now they believe it was from heat. Uh, when the, the pyroclastic clouds came in, uh, the heat from the volcano. Um Uh, yeah, uh, the the site was was very powerful um, because you you really got a sense of what a Roman city looked like. It's one thing to see remains here and there, to see the entire city, to see the homes, to see where they worshipped, to see where their shops were, uh, was really really cool. And it definitely, I think Pompeii has to be in the discussion for the coolest historic site I've ever been to in my life. Um. Yeah, so Pliny the Elder, they found his body uh, on, the, on the seaside. I believe he died from suffocation, because uh, if the pyroclastic flow had hit him, I don't think they would have been able to recover his body. Um, so here's the arena in Pompeii that seated, basically seated the entire city. Uh, seated like, um, I think, 10,000 10, people. No, maybe it was 20,000. It was 20,000 could fit in this one. Uh, and this one is about 150 years older than the Colosseum. Uh, this was built in like 
80 BC or 70 BC, something like that. Uh, how do they keep them so well preserved? Well, they were buried by ash and only uh, uncovered in the last hundred years, most of this stuff, last hundred to 200 years. Um, do I love the liberation of Paris? Yes, I do. I'm glad Paris was liberated. Thank you for that. Um, yeah, a lot of people live. Mo the, the majority of people who lived in Pompeii survived um, because they got out because they had time because the volcano started erupting a day before it buried Pompeii. Um, so this is uh, now we're outside the necropolises. Remember I said earlier that Roman tombs were outside of the city. Uh, so this is walking along where one of those uh, necropolises were, necropoli. Um, and you can still see the names of the people who are buried in these tombs. These are all tombs. Uh, really, really, really cool. Uh, so like I said, if you have any questions that don't relate to what we're talking about, in Italy, uh, I'll try to get to those at the end. Uh, these are all views of tombs. Uh, ju just, I mean, just the, the history is ridiculous. Just seeing the tombs of people that aren't in the history books, but they're just regular people. Not regular people. These were wealthy people, um, but still. And then again, there's a view uh, of Pompeii with uh, Vesuvius in the background. Uh, this is kind of a layout of the city, the way it was laid out, Regios, and then um, and then into the smaller sites. And it kind of helps you organize in your mind where everything is. Again, this is the, one of the necropolises that we saw. Uh, so now we're back inside. And uh, th this is this might be the uh, the thumbnail for the video on Pompeii that, I, that I'll do. I've got two different pictures that I might use for it. Um, no, the necropolis in Paris. Well, not the. I think if you mean the uh, the um, uh, the catacombs, those are actually from the 17 and 1800s. Um, so much, much newer. What spurred the effort in the 18 and 1900s? They found it. They didn't actually verify the location of Pompeii until the middle of the 18th century because it was buried. Um, yeah, so this is just kind of a random city there. Uh, so now this is inside of one of the homes. I mean, look at the color that's still preserved on the walls. It's just insane. Uh, so this is the earliest known color image of Alexander the Great. There he is right there. This was on the floor of a guy's house. This is the, the house of the fawn. This is the one that was 3,000 square meters. That's 27,000 square feet. Nuts. Um, and this depicts his victory over Darius II, if I remember right. Battle of ISIS. That's right, John. Thank you for that. Um, yeah, that is the portrait we always see of Alexander. There it is, right there on some dude's floor in his house in Pompeii. Uh, there's another view of it. I kind of raised my camera up to get a better view of it there. Um, yeah, and again, these are just views inside the guy's house. Okay, so now this is one of the Roman baths. This is the changing room inside the bathhouse. Uh, there's one of the, uh, this is basically their hot tub right there. Um, when was Versailles liberated? You tell me. We're talking about Pompeii right now, but thank you for that. Um and these are just some of the statues that are inside of this bathhouse. It's crazy. Um, take a look at, I mean, look at that. Look at that. Oh my gosh, it's so cool. When was Pompeii destroyed? Uh, AD 79. Uh, so you'll sometimes see the date August and sometimes you'll see October. We're almost certain now that it was October of, 18, of AD 79. 
Uh, there's a number of factors why, um, including the food that they found in people's stomachs and some of the rem the remains of things they found, some coins they found. There's a lot of different reasons, but all of the evidence points to October of, of 79. Um, there's the forum. And again, these are just streets in Pompeii. This is one of the theaters. There are two theaters in the theater district in Pompeii. This is the smaller of the two. And there's the bigger of the two. And they're actually building a modern stage. I don't think I took a picture of it. I didn't. But it will be in the video. They're building a modern stage in there so they can um, do some performances and stuff. Uh, so this was our, our the last, those of us who had gone to Pompeii, this was our last dinner together on the last night. So if you see John there, John Reedy in the chat, there's John right there on the right. Uh, there's Jonathan right there. Cannon, Cannon was with us in Germany and Austria, and he flew to Italy just to hang out with us at the end of the tour for a couple of days. That's how cool Cannon is. And he has the exact same smile in every picture that he takes. He's got a great smile, so I would go with it too if I could. My last tiramisu, or last night. Uh, yes, Pink Floyd did do a concert in, I, it wasn't in the theater, it was in the arena that I showed you earlier, the one that seated 20,000 people. The, the amphitheater is where Pink Floyd did the concert. And there's actually a display there about the Pink Floyd concert. Not a flattering picture of you at all, Joe. Uh, no, I guess not. That is all right. It's not bad. Um, all right, and there's uh, this is what we call the um, the repeat offenders. These are the eight of us who were also in Germany and Austria together, and then we're in Italy together. Uh, so there's myself on the left. There's Vasek, uh, then Cannon, Jonathan, Joe, Dominic, Michael, and Anna. Uh, and so far, Anna, Mike, Michael. Jonathan and Vashik are all going to Egypt as well. And Joe wants to go. And if a spot opens up, he's going to try to go to that one. So he's getting married soon. So uh, he might, you know, he, he was trying to be thoughtful of his future bride. Um, no, we did not go to the Leaning Tower of Pisa. Uh, so then here's, I think this is just me flying home. So there's the bottle of limoncello that I bought in the airport in Rome that was shattered in my suitcase when I got home to the Cleveland airport. So unfortunately the limoncello did not make it. And with that, you have kind of the highlights, uh, the pictures of uh, my trip to Rome. Um, so, uh, so yeah, so there's that. Um, so I'll have to pick up some local limoncello here. Uh, so, wow, the stream has been going for two hours. So I think I'm going to go ahead and ro um, wrap it up. Um, I'm sorry that you don't like the name, but we like it. We came up with it. We're going to keep it. We did fly over Corsica on the way home. Did I? Oh yeah, I do have that picture. Okay. Here, I'll show you guys that real quick. Yeah. So out my window, um, that's when we were flying over Corsica. Couldn't see Napoleon's hometown from here. That would have been under the clouds way up here in the top left uh, is where Napoleon was born. But that is the island of Corsica viewed from the north looking southwest from here. Uh, could I recommend a mic and the one that I use? Yeah, so I'm using a, a Blue Yeti mic. Uh, and it's great. I, I think it works well. So, um, John, yes, I will see you in Egypt. So, so thank you to those of you who donated, uh, in the super chat. Uh, and I hope you guys enjoyed this, uh, kind of look at our trip to, uh, Italy. And uh, I will be announcing some more group trips soon. Hope you'll join us for those. So, uh, thanks. And we'll see you again soon.